Good morning. A little bit late today. Kind of busy visiting with the grandkids and kids and stuff. And I looked at my watch and oh my goodness, here I am late. But today we'll look uh, quickly at Exodus 21 and 22. And these are uh, other laws that uh, are given. You know, in chapter 20, uh, God had given the Ten Commandments and then the the law of the altar, basically of how to build the altar. And 21 starts out with the law concerning servants. And this also is talked about in Deuteronomy 15. Uh, and it says, if you buy a Hebrew servant, he will serve six years and then the seventh year will go free. And that's a part of the... The Jubilee year. I mean, that's, you know, the, and it, it's, it ties in with um, laws are going to come about, like the land. You, you raise a crop for six years, and then the seventh year you rest the land, and, and many different things that way. So in six years they serve, seventh year they go free, and they pay nothing. If he comes in by himself, he goes out by himself. If he comes in married, he goes out, you know, married that way, and, and all of these different things. So it um, talks about, laws concerning servants, slaves, and, you know, sometimes the the Israelites would find themselves um, destitute and they would, you know, sell themselves into slavery or, you know, just to have enough that way. And, and then like verse 7 says, if a man sells his daughter to be a female slave, she shall not go out as a male slave, but if she doesn't please her master, then he can let her be redeemed and they have no right to sell her and different things. So, you know, concerning, you know, slavery and servitude, working for each other. And, and as I said, the beginning of, of the um, idea or the, of the year of the Jubilee. Uh, chat, verse 12 starts out with uh, concerning violence. You know, the one who strikes a man so that he dies shall be put to death. However, if he didn't do it deliberately, if he didn't lie in wait, um, this, you know, is different. You know, if, but if a man acts with premeditation against his neighbor to kill him by treachery, you should, you know, and, you know, this man deserves death, you know, so it's, and this is kind of where the eye for the eye and the tooth for the tooth and, and an idea comes from that way, you know. He who kidnaps a man and sells him shall be put to death. I mean, so it's, it's laws concerning violence or, I mean, how you treat your, your neighbor and, and others in your area that way. Verse 20, if a man beats his male or female servant with a rod so that he dies, he shall be punished, you know. And, um, but it, it's, it, it's just different laws and, and rules and regulations as to, you know, um, how you treat your neighbor. And, and these things are still critical today. I mean, and really today. I mean, it's just, I mean, we, we Jesus' golden rule is, you know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, you know. And if you wouldn't want it done to you, well, don't do it to others. If you don't want somebody to say this about you, well, don't say that about others, you know, just to to treat them fairly and honestly and, and with respect in all of those different ways. The last part of chapter 21 deals with... Um, Laws concerning animals, uh, the, the the oxen that are helping in the field or uh, belonging to other people, you know, and if ox gores a man, the ox shall be stoned and put to, you know, and and the owner of the ox will be acquitted. But, uh, you know, and, and so it, it talks about, you know, if your property or something you own hurts someone else, you know, and, and um, you know, it, it, depending on all of those different things and, Verse 33, if a man opens a pit, or if a man opens a pit and doesn't cover it, and an ox or a donkey falls in it, then you know, the owner of a pit shall make it good. So if you, if you do something intentionally or unintentionally that harms someone else or someone else's property, you're responsible. You know, it, it's some of these things that, you know, just kind of make common sense today. And it's, you know, if, if I'm driving my vehicle and I say I run a, into someone's yard and I destroy their trees or, you know, whatever. I mean, I'm responsible for that, you know, and different things that happen. That's maybe a different ex kind of an example, but, but it's taking responsibility for your own actions and in so many different ways, you know, in, in some ways it, it doesn't make hardly sense that we need to have these spelled out. I mean, it, so much of it seems to be common sense but there are people with no common sense. There are some people with no sense of moral ethics. You know, it's all they can see and think about is themselves. 
And that's a sad thing in so many ways. Chapter 22 uh, starts out with uh, the responsibility for property, your, yours or your own. And it starts, if a man steals an ox or a sheep and slaughters it or sells it, he will restore five oxen for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. So it's, you know, if you if you unlawfully take something and and sell it for your own gain, that sell something that doesn't belong to you, it it kind of, you know, it's one of those, this this first one, you know, it reminds me of of Nathan coming to David, you know, with the, with the story about the rich man who has, you know, his huge flock takes the lamb of the man who only has one and 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 butchers it to sell, you know, to, to provide a feast, you know, and it, it's, you know, you don't do that. You don't take advantage of other people's property. You don't steal things and sell them for your own good. And and if you do, um, you know, you know you've done wrong. And I know that uh, making restitution is, is one of those things that happens, you know, and that's what it says in verse 3. He should make full restitution, you know, and, and it says if he has nothing, I mean, if he's got nothing to make restitution with, then he will be sold into slavery for his theft. And and this is, I mean, we can see others, other examples of that as well, where, you know, the 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 king or whomever will will say, you know, I'm going to, you're going to be my slave, my servant, until you pay this debt in full, you know. I mean, unless you can pay the debt, you know, this is what's going to happen to you. We hear, hear that in some of Jesus' parables. He talks about that. And so if you don't have the money to make restitution, then this would be one of the ways that you would get into to becoming a slave, a servant. And so then on the sixth year again, on the jubilee year, the seventh year rather, um, you would again get your freedom that way. Verse 5, if a man calls is a field or a vineyard to be grazed and lets his animals loose on it and it feeds on another man's field, um, you know, you make restitution. And that's, I mean, in today's society, if if a farmer's sheep or cattle or pigs or something get out and and destroy someone else's crop, um, there is a responsibility that way, and and all of that. If a fire breaks out and it catches in thorns, so that standing grain or stacked grain, you know the person who set the fire will be responsible. And and so I mean we have forest fires out in you know different areas of our um, country, California and. Uh, in, other Colorado and places that some of those are started intentionally. Some of them are started accidentally, but if they figure out who started it, that person bears responsibility for it. And so it's just uh, showing that you, 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 again, you respect other people's property for what they are. And if you destroy someone's property, you are responsible for making it right again, you know, and, and, Verse 9 starts out with any kind of trespass. You know, it's again, you respect your neighbor's property. You don't just go on it. I mean, it's just, you don't walk into your neighbor's house, well, maybe depending on how good friends you are and stuff, but you don't just go to a town and walk into somebody's house and make yourself at home and fix yourself a sandwich. I mean, that's not right. That's trespassing. And and it, it's respecting that other person's property and privacy and everything that way. And so it, you know, there's a lot of laws and rules here that talk about, you know, how we treat others and respect others. It's, you know, he's, it's, he's expanding the, the Ten Commandments in, you know, like honor your father and your mother, do not steal, do not murder, do not covet, you know, he's, it's an expansion of that. And so while we have the Ten Commandments, there are, I mean, hundreds and thousands of laws. And that's when we get into Leviticus. Uh, I often get bogged down in Leviticus because of some of the details of the laws and different things. Uh, the last part of, of chapter 22 deals with moral and ceremonial principles. Um, and the first part, if a man entices a virgin who is not betrothed and, you know, and, and lies with her, you know, I mean, this is this is not what you do. I mean, this is um, it doesn't it's statutory rape in our society today, basically that way. And you know, and, and so um, it talks about again our relationships and respecting other people. 
verse 18, if you shall not permit a sorceress to live, you know, um, I mean, we don't, we don't really truly believe in sorceresses today, but, you know, it's just like the, the New Salem witch trials in early American history. Uh, I mean, there were, this was kind of taken into place there, you know, but there were many that, that died that, you know, wrongly that way. And whoever lies with an animal will be put to death. Who sacrifices to God except to the Lord will be destroyed. Again, you don't mistreat a stranger. You know, you, you, you're welcoming. You're, uh, you know, so it's just, again, more of how you deal with people. Verse 25, if you lend money to any of my people who are poor, you shall not be like a money lender. Don't charge him interest. You know, so, you know, help somebody out. Give them a helping hand. Boost them up. Lift them up. Encourage them. Um, you know, in, in today's world, um, it's not quite so common, but um, to, to help someone else get started in, in a business or in farming or whatever that way is, you know, uh, to, to do everything we can to help someone else in, in so many ways. And verse 28, you shall not revile God. You know, I mean, and we, we, we see that a lot in today's society. People just say there is no God or they, you know, they curse God's name. They use God's name in vain. Um, and, and, and we, we blame God sometimes for things that happen. But the thing with, with that is, is that, you know, God wants good for us. God doesn't cause the bad things to happen to us. So God isn't up there running every aspect of our lives, but yet our faith and our trust in God is, is that he is, he is with us in and through all things and, and leading and guiding us that way. And so it's, it's just, you know, these, and we're going to find, you know, as we go on, you know, tomorrow we're going to, I'm going to talk about First uh, Corinthians 12 and 13, you know, on, we, I don't have worship in Sutton tomorrow morning because we're um, celebrating my grandson's birthday tomorrow. But so Monday, again, when we get back to Exodus, we will look at more of these expanded laws that we find in Exodus of in the upcoming chapters that way. Well, I want to leave you with this today. The last part of Exodus 22, verse 31 says, And you shall be holy men to me. You know, and, and you know, it, it goes on, you shall not eat meat torn by beasts in the field, you shall throw it to the dog. But you shall be holy men to me. You shall be holy people to God. And this is, this is the way we are to live, to be set apart for God, to be aware that we are loved and cherished by God, and, and especially to know that God loves us enough that he sent his only son. We are holy to God.